just testing if my sound works. Yep, you sound good. good. We are waiting for a few more folks to be able to come on in. So, good morning. And I heard an Amy, so hello, Amy. Hey, welcome. This is your opportunity for a mic check before we get rolling. If anybody has exactly, exactly. <laughs> mic check. Hi, Amy. You sound great. Rock and roll. Thank you. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, hi, everybody. Um, so we have a full house today. We uh, do. We do. So kick us off. Go ahead. We've got enough people here. Rock and roll. Yes. Thank you, Amy. Um, so um, happy new year to everyone. I don't think I wished all of you yet. So and it's only the 17th of January. So I'm wishing you hopefully I won't have to repeat this again. <laughs> uh, so today we have two items on the agenda. Can we go to the next slide, please? Yeah. Um, so the first one is, uh, you know, uh, we've had a couple of turns at this one. Uh, one, a private uh, TOC discussion uh, last year and uh, more recently in the CNCF TOC repository. So, uh, hi, Phil. So uh, I would like us to, you know, talk a little bit about it. Um, I want to see what uh, what folks on the call think about this, including the TOC folks as well. Um, let's start with free flowing. If it doesn't work, then uh, we'll switch around to, um, you know, raising your hands. Uh, so let's. Who wants to get started? Justin, would you like? Uh, we have two Justin. So uh, Capo, Mr. Capo, so would you like to get started? Um, uh, since you uh, raised both the email and the issue. Um, in the CNCF DOC repository. Sure, yes. Um, I, I, I think this is a pretty simple uh, issue and I am glad to, to see that, that some folks from the Notary V2 project did show up uh, because there hadn't been any responses to the thread and there had been, you know, prodding on their, sl on their you know, Slack channel and stuff like this to interact in some way. Um, but, but basically the, the project is entirely different. Um, there has none of the same people. The design has, you know, is completely different. It's fundamentally flawed in a bunch of different obvious ways that were pointed out. The uh, way this was done was completely in, in a way that had the project or the CNCF enforced code of conduct in a way that they do now um, never, would have been allowed to to fly um and and frankly it's um i, I think a, a really bad look and a bad precedent uh for it to to be inside the um inside the cncf especially the way it is because you know i mean i could start a crypto miner project to call it notary v3 and i would have more provenance uh, claim to provenance than uh, Notary V2 does with with what they've done. Uh, Justin, I want to divide the uh, divide the discussion into like two parts. One was before the last time the, the TOC interjected and uh, you know requested some changes, and after. Um, are you talking about before or after or both? Um, I, I would say both. Uh, really what happened is the TOC stepped in, asked for some changes. We were told things like the project could have a new name. It wasn't going to try to ride on the coattails of notary, uh, the notary name and cause confusion. Um, we were you know, told a lot of things were going to happen. They were going to change so that we could participate. Others could participate freely in the project. They were going to make changes to code of conduct and all of this. And basically, instead, the project really went dormant um, for a very long period of time with no visible progress of anything. 
thing. Mm -hmm. And I think most of us thought that the project was basically dead. Um, and then it's kind of had, you know, they've, I don't know what has happened to cause this to occur, but they brought in new people who have no background with the project and don't really know what has happened in the past with it to try to move it to a state where they can declare some form of victory or something with it. I, I'm, I'm presuming they'll be able to speak and talk about it. Um, but once again, it's now it's like a whole new cast of characters in addition to the other cast of characters that went in and threw all the original people out of the project. Um, so I, I, I think that all of the complaints and criticisms are equally valid, both pre and post. And none of them were really addressed in a way that I think um, any of the original signatories of the letter uh, felt was satisfactory. And also, I, I would say that I don't believe that by us sending the letter privately to the TOC, um, we believed we were trying to do something private. Um, we were trying to give people a heads up as I did with the message that I sent to the TOC ahead of making this public, which was to just say, hey, here's a heads up of what we want to say publicly. And we were encouraged to keep that message private while the TOC discussed it and did things with it. And then all we heard months later was a response that was, you know, uh, effectively almost entirely the opposite of what we had all wanted and thought was fair and equitable and reasonable. Yeah, got it, Justin. Thank you. Um, I'll, I'll take, uh, I'm not, I'll let other speak, people speak as well, uh, especially folks who have been on um, the, either on the Notation New Project or on the Notary V2 or, um, you know, the, our signatories. Uh, does anybody else wants to want to go next? Uh, go ahead, Lucky. Hey, Dems. Hello, Lucky Evenson from Microsoft. Um, I uh, am associated with the Notary V2 project. Namely, my contributions have been I worked on the governance documentation. Um, the governance docs uh, that were suggested through uh, this change that uh, Justin Capos just said. So just I wanted to probably respond to a few things that I saw on the thread that were dangling um, and, and uh, you know, action items for this project specifically. One was specifically about governance. Um, and we've uh, spent some time thinking about how we can improve the, uh, the governance docs. And we presented... Uh, uh, preliminary proposal to some changes to the governance, mainly if I was to summarize what they are is making them more discoverable, uh, making the uh, maintainers more consistent so that it was easy to find who was the maintainers of what projects um, underneath the notary project organization in GitHub. Um, so that's something, you know, the notary uh, maintainers have been interested in seeing if we can do that. I'm happy to share that document. Um, because I know that there was an ask dims that governance changes would have been made by August. I think that was August of last year. Um, and there were some governance changes in there, but I think we've taken a look and we can make some better effort around what Justin Capos has called out around making it more clear, discoverable who, who owns what. Um, I was part of a lot of the changes when our notary was moved, um, the notary V1 project was moved out from under the tough organization. Um, and I was acting on what I thought was um, agreed upon, which was that we'd move it out to its own organization and that we'd rename um, notary uh, because notary V2 was, there was a project called notary V2 under there and it was changed to notation um, as a way to stop confusion, which is um, one area. And kind of the idea behind pulling it out in its, into its own org was um, that we could create an ecosystem of projects under there that people could implement the specifications. And I believe that we created a couple of different repos with different maintainers for that specific purpose. Um, as for, you know, what's in that, that issue 981, I think you know, as being part of that community, I'm not a maintainer of Notary uh, V2 specifically, but I've participated in, in meetings. I think 
that um, there's been a lot of changes to the way that that community has been run. And I would invite those members to come back and take a look um, because I think we've, a lot of those um, allegations in the, in the issue are no longer valid. Um, and there are other members of that community that are participating um, in there. So I'm really trying to see what are the, what are the areas we can improve um, and make that community better and see what we can put into shape. And what we've got now is um, some governance changes um, to transparency and discoverability. And then I also think um, what was called out in there, making sure that our agendas are always clearly documented, that meeting minutes are always clearly documented, and we could probably work with the CNCF to make sure that um, videos are posted. I think the videos are there. We could go and post the recordings um, and do that, but I suggested that we go talk to Amy because I believe there's a tool to do that in an automated fashion. Um, so I think you know all the things we have a plan for for the dangling pieces that need an action item i'd be happy to discuss them um but yeah interested to work to make it a better community and and um help address any issues that have been raised that's where i'll stop at this point thanks Jim. thanks um, yeah i just wanted to add that um i mean just to mention it going quiet i think you know a bunch of the work that was being done for a while were ended up landing in places like OCI with things like reference types that um, were kind of general pieces of work that were needed as generic infrastructure in the ecosystem around with signing and uh, other use cases. And, and so, um, you know, there's a bunch of work that, that ended up landing there rather than notary. I think that also uh, just, you know, to be clear that, um, you know, there's, there's lots of potential um, components needed and that, um, you know, notation is not a kind of be all end all project that replaces notary v1 in any sort of sense. And you know, I think there's um, uh, ongoing ongoing work looking at um, you know we're still we're, you know um, uh, you know we've been doing internal draft work um, which I shared with Justin recently on like ways we can incorporate tough into this ecosystem. There's um, a bunch of um, uh, thinking about things like in Toto, and I think that you know these things are not you know th th these projects are designed and notary project is designed to be modular and components and not like you know uh, complete kind of replacements or or other things. There's you know there's a lot of work to do to actually put these things together into ways that people can use them effectively. Um, and you know I think that it's still um, you know kind of designed to be. Um, a project that's a, a set of related projects. Uh, thanks, Justin. Uh, Matt, please go for it. Yeah, so I've been doing a little bit of investigation on notary and notation and what's going on here, trying to figure out what happened. Um, and I've learned a handful of things that I don't know how many people know some of the context. So, you know, like um, uh, notary V1 is still in use. Right. I know there's been talk of it's archived. It's not in use anymore. It's gone. Um, yet I have found multiple instances where it's still used in production. And I think Docker Hub is still one example of that. Uh, so it hasn't gone away. Code has been merged into it and it is still in use. So I don't think that needs to be forgotten. Um, I also noticed that with Notary V2 and Notation, having a new thing that comes up and takes life, and then there was the old one, we already have examples of this in the CNCF, right? Where a project comes in with one way of doing things and one architecture, and then as things change, get re-architected, the ecosystem does things differently, competitors comes along, things change, something comes along and changes. And a recent example of this would be Flux V2, uh, which just became a graduated project, right? Flux came in as a project with Flux V1. While they were incubating, they created version two. Version two went live and the, the whole thing met all of the criteria for, you know, um, graduation from governance to everything else. And let's be honest, governance again on, with incubating projects is often kind of shaky. And in fact, that's one of the things that isn't a hard requirement until something hits graduation. Um, because along the way, people can be kind of shaky with that. And it's one of those areas of improvement, but that's where it falls. And a project will come through and then this new thing will come along and go. And we, we have examples of this. So to say V1 versus V2 requires a new project 
is one of those things we'd really have to dig in deep on, I think, because we already have these examples of transformation while in the CNCF. Um, I also noticed that along the way, um, Notary uh, in its new form is um, a collection of specs in many ways with a reference uh, implementation in notation, right? And those specs, many of which were worked out with the OCI, the Open Container Initiative, to make some of this stuff work together. And if I even understand it right, this involves some of the SIG store project, which now can use some of those same things, and they were worked out together. So some of the work that you see in, in Notary V2 and Notation has actually been worked out with other organizations along the way. And there are people who are working towards using this. Um, you know, I've gone around and, and, and asked, I said, all right, SIG store, it's great. I use SIG store. My company, you use SIG store. You can verify our container images, a bunch of them with SIG store. But I went around and asking and I said, is, are there places where it doesn't work? And the answer I've been told is yes. And that's one of those areas where something like notary and notation may be able to step in and solve for, because it doesn't work in every situation that you're going to run to. Um, and you know, that's kind of normal. We we have that kind of thing in the Linux Foundation, in the CNCF, look at Container D and look at Cryo. We we're okay with that as long as things are able to work out and have healthy ecosystems and things like that. And so I wonder where there's going to be um, things that work together using specs and those same specs workplaces, where certain projects are going to carry themselves along further and do really well at it um, for their own niche use cases. And maybe, you know, a niche can be a 1% niche can be a graduated project because you can have enough people who are using that. And I'm curious to see what projects align in what ways and what users and their reasons for that. Because, you know, as we've seen, there isn't always one size fits all. Argo and Flux graduated, what, a week from each other? And they both are in very much the same space, but they do things in different ways. And they have a healthy number of users on both sides who are happy with them. And so what does that look like in this space with notary and notation and SIG store and everything else going on? I think there's a lot to be seen here as well. Uh, thanks, Matt. Uh, Justin Capos, just hold on just in case somebody else uh, has want to say something. I saw a few people, Decloak, uh, Vincent, Jason, uh, Bridget, any any thoughts here before I hand it off to... Go, go for it, Jason. Jason, oh, we you're totally muted. We can't hear you, yeah. I just, I will unmute for a second and say, Go I really it. appreciate the healthy, yeah. I really appreciate the healthy discussion and I appreciate the attention from the TSC towards making sure the community in all of its variations works well. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Bridget. Jason, are you ready? Yeah, go for it. Um, nope, we don't hear you. <laughs> okay, now uh, we, uh, you know, come back again. Uh, Justin Capos, please go for it. Okay, thank you for giving me so much time here. I appreciate it. Um, I, I wanted to mention a couple of things really quickly in response to a bunch of this. So the governance problems that uh, Lockley mentioned were only kind of part of the problem. It really wasn't so much the governance. It, it was really the people involved with the governance and the way that that had worked. And so I understand that some of those personalities have moved on to, you know, other things like this and, and so on. Um, fundamentally, it, it still comes down to, you know, this question of, of like, who created this? There was an existing community of people that did something, as there was in the case of other projects like Argo. And they came and that community went and created a V2. And that was very successful. That's a great starting point, okay? But this isn't what happened in this case. There, there's zero of the original maintainers, zero of the original code, zero of the original design. This is effectively an entirely new project that's come along and is promoting itself heavily. And in fact, like a third of the web page, if you go to the notary v2 web page, is basically we are a CNCF project. They've had no security review. The, you know, the, it's there, there are fundamental problems in the security design and other things that have been repeatedly pointed out 
in the public meetings that you can see, you know, time after time that are unaddressed in the project. Um, okay. And yeah, I, I same, think we've yeah. made the okay. same argument before, uh, Justin. So, sure, uh, let's sure. so let me, but, yeah. but let me let me say one last thing and then I'll mm -hmm. okay. Which is that um, I would very much like, uh, considering the fact that there's not a big contingent from the SIG store community here, and there was some discussion made about integrations with this project and everything, for this discussion to be put back on the issue tracker in a form where they can participate and they can comment, um, so that that we can do this in a you know in a way that doesn't involve only the people in the room during a very specific period when certain people have you know, other personal problems going on, like family illnesses and stuff and can't make it. Yeah, uh, absolutely. If you want to go back and create another issue somewhere else, um, happy to redirect people to that. The other issues, um, in the end, Justin, we all have to work together to make each other better. Uh, and we, we, we have to keep trying to make things better for us as well as other people. Um, so I would like to move to, towards a cooperative solution to like what we are trying to do here. Um, so uh, I want to take the things that you pointed out in a positive fashion and see how, like we tried a, a few things and the TOC ended up asking the folks to do something. So we, we're gonna try doing it again and see what happens. We are not in the habit of, you know, shutting down projects just because, uh, you know, uh, people don't like it, right? Like we, there is, there are time periods in the project's growth uh, when we mandate the security review or a governance review and things like that. So we will catch it. Um, and we, uh, like uh, Matt Farina pointed out that uh, we've had uh, different projects uh, that have had multiple versions of things uh, doing totally different things, possibly with totally different people too. Um, so, I'm going to take that input as uh, uh, the, the input all, uh, of all the things that you've said as part of what the TOC will consider. But, you know, we will end up taking a bunch of the things that we heard here uh, and read on the issue and whatever issue you want to make, you want to create, we'll take that into consideration and, and then come, ba come back to the team to say, hey, this is what we think you all should be doing. So please, uh, you know, consider it while you are uh, doing your, um, you know, the business of uh, doing the open source for the work that you're doing here. So that is the overall framework uh, we are going to operate in. Um, so I'll switch back to Jason. Uh, are you ready now? I'm going to assume you can't hear me. Yes, we yes. can. Go ahead. You can. Oh, yeah. my God. Okay. Yeah, come on Fantastic. in. Uh, I put it all in the chat, but I will reiterate the thing. I think the, the thing that I was re, uh, responding to earlier was Matt's comment about uh, Notary and SIG store and some of that work. Um, uh, I don't think that the request, as, as Justin laid out and as I signed on to, was that Notary not exist or that it like shouldn't, doesn't, doesn't have a place in the world. I don't think anybody says that. Um, just that as an incubating project, I, I think the concern was that it would not meet the bar of an incubating project if it walked in off the street today. Um, the other thing that came up was the the in the chat that um, the security review is a requirement for graduation. I think Notary being a security focused project with security review security concerns being raised sort of raises the bar. Uh, like you know, Notary should have a, a higher uh, security bar than I think the average incubating project off the street. Yes, yeah. all yeah, uh, so what we have done previously in, a, in projects with multiple components or multiple repositories uh, that are different stages of, uh, you know, you know, uh, growth or uh, maturity, uh, what we've ended up doing is we told the project to clearly uh, delineate which ones are uh, production ready and which ones are not and have enough language in the repositories or in the sub projects or in the different repositories that it controls to have enough guidance in there so that people are not led astray by you know coming through one portal and ending up somewhere else kind of thing so we have done this before and the guidance that TOC has given is hey uh, 
please make sure that you document these things properly so end users are not surprised uh, and there is no bait and switch, okay? So uh, anybody else, uh, Matt, you came back. Do you want to take a turn? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, I, I want to address one thing, you know, that it would not be an independent incubating project yet. Uh, because I, I, when that was said, I went back and looked at the incubating stage requirements and what do we normally expect? And also, how does something shift, right? And flux V1 to V2, looking at something like that, right? V2 obviously didn't meet the requirements while V1 was around initially. It had to pick up certain things like your multiple production instances and things like that. And so when I was looking at this and looking over it, um, I couldn't honestly answer all of the questions, but it's at a point where it does meet multiple of the criteria. Um, and some of the things we would have to do the due diligence on to know whether it met more of them. But there is a possibility. V1 still meets the criteria, and we're in that transition phase. And that's what normally happens. When Flux V2 came around, people didn't say, hey, this one doesn't meet the requirements yet. Break it off into a separate project. And then once it is, we bring it in as incubating, even though its architecture and the very way that it did things were different. And I think you know we try to be consistent. And I know not everyone's going to agree with that. But one of the things that um, I know I work hard on is be consistent. There are things that other TOC members will know that I sometimes disagree with. But if it's an ongoing decision that the TOC consistently makes, if we're going to revisit that, we're going to revisit it. So we now do it in a new consistent manner with a justification behind it. And until then, we will be consistent with the way we're doing things so projects know what to expect. And I think in that case being consistent is okay notary v2 is a different architecture different way of doing things um but we don't just jettison it right away because it doesn't meet the criteria right away as it's ramping up um and so that's just consistency in our nature and it's why i would be tentative to go after that because then we're setting a new and different precedent here and does it become now an ongoing existing precedent for everybody is it a one-off why would we do a one-off you know, we have to think about things in this this macro level way. So we're consistent. People know what to expect from us. They know how things operate as, as best we can. And so that's just one of my thinkings on this. And I did go look at it and a number of the criteria. I can tell you today they already meet things like the number of production instances. I didn't go chase that down because that takes a little bit more legwork than I was going to go put in. Um, but that's the kind of criteria where we're now getting to. Or do they meet those criteria yet in it? Thank you. Um, I, I did want to see if Emily wanted to voice something about like uh, the security review and when we do the security review, what kind of security review. Emily, did you, did you want to take a turn at uh, how we do things so people know what, what we do and when? So there's a couple of things that are going on with this. So the security tag, um, Justin, who is a member, he's a technical lead. Um, we've gone through and re we've revamped how security reviews are done and the way that the structure is set up such that a self review by the project is usually ideal for sandbox applications or really early incubating projects. And it's a guiding point for them to set up the security of their project. From there, between incubation and graduation, the joint review is intended to be conducted. The combination of the self review and the joint review are usually handed over for a security audit for projects that really weren't that extra level of security attention. We found in the past that having both the joint review and the self review as uh, as precursors to the security audit, not necessarily a requirement, but just having that extra documentation and research done makes the audits go a lot smoother. And those projects are generally set up for a much healthier audit experience. And the auditors themselves uh, find a lot of value in that content. Given everything that I'm hearing currently about the initial in, uh, indications of notary v1 and what has come out of as an as a new change within the project, I would like to caution folks, and this kind of goes a little bit to what Matt Farina was mentioning, we don't necessarily evaluate changes in architecture and design um, without giving them runway to start doing that development and architecture work on. It'd be like saying, harden your environment, but you don't get any development machines to try to practice and play around with and figure out what configurations are gonna work for your users' needs. So 
for this project, I'm hesitant to actually go back and put this back on security tag to become involved in for a security review without a clear direction of what we want to accomplish between the two projects, because that's what it's starting to sound like is these are really two efforts with uh, a very colorful group of passionate contributors and community members that want to see them successful, which is great, and that's what we want to foster. Thanks, Emily. Uh, let me see if any of the other TOC members have anything to say. Um, uh, Richie, you are decloaked. Uh, do you want to add something? I don't think I have anything of value to add. Okay, thank you. Uh, any other TOC members? Uh, I see Dave. Going once, going twice. No, no one else. So um, are there other folks uh, in from the community on the call who may or may not have uh, been involved uh, in the discussions on the issues or anything, uh, but wanted to uh, speak up a little bit? Uh, if I don't hear, I can call on people too. So <laughs> please decloak and uh, speak. Okay. Um, uh, Beth, you've got some weird audio issues today. Try again. Can you hear me now? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um, I just put quickly one little thing in the chat, though, um, that mm -hmm. to to highlight that. Um, obviously, like Emily said, this is uh, colorful and somewhat contentious. Um, area that I'm, I'm not going to pick sides on uh, that to to Justin Capo's, you know, p point of completely different folks involved and otherwise to unravel that history, I think is part of why we're even here now and having somewhat of, you know, different efforts and needing to, you know, kind of keep checks and balances. But the, the fact that there are different people involved is like almost like a benefit of this conversation rather than a drawback to the fact that what notary tried to evolve in, you know, with notary v2 or notation or whatever, and SIG store even existing was all part of that same growth and renewal. So um, that's not to say that it's against either one on either one of them, but it's actually for both of them and why we need to continue working together. Thanks, Vincent. Um, so any folks who were, who are currently part of the notation stuff, other than Justin Cormack, um, are you on here and would you like to talk? Okay, I think uh, uh, we are reaching the end. Uh, we have one more topic to cover. Um, so uh, thanks for all the good conversations here and the discussions. Let's try to make each other better uh, for sure. Uh, and uh, we will, uh, we as in the TOC will try to talk, reach out to more people who haven't been on the call like Justin Capos mentioned, and we will uh, come up with a set of guidance uh, for you know the community at large. Um, does it sound okay to everyone? Okay, thank you. Uh, thanks everyone. So let's go to the second part that we wanted to talk about today, which is the flat car project proposal. Uh, are any of the folks from the community who participate, who wrote up the proposal here today? Hi, James. Yeah, Andy Randall here uh, with Microsoft. Hi. I'm actually the author of the uh, of the of the PR, um, I think there's other folks on the on the team here, though, including Vincent. Uh, uh, and Andy, why don't you give us uh, uh, set this up for us? Uh, like, <laughs> uh, why flat car? Why here? And you know, how how do, how do you fit into the overall picture that we are uh, that we're working on here at CNCF? Sure. I mean, flat cars um, uh, probably a little bit unique in terms of uh um 
proposals that you're going to see for you know quotes new projects coming into CNCF because it's actually got history going back to 2013 back to the very very earliest days of cloud native before CNCF even existed um you know core OS was one of the foundational companies in the cloud native ecosystem um a lot of people here have a soft spot for core OS um and you know core OS container Linux was the foundation of, of that company and a lot of the original innovative cloud native work was done on you know on the basis of um, of core OS container Linux um some great work that was done in that project and that kind of obviously when Red Hat acquired um core OS the company core OS container Linux went on to a new life as part of the Fedora project with Fedora core OS and Red Hat core OS is the commercial product uh, built on that um it, it kind of inspired a lot of you know a, a lot of the things that went on there but Flat car really was the only project that um well we so we forked the original container core OS initially in a, a kind of a friendly fork way of just we built as a downstream but then when the original core OS um, came to an end we took it forward as its own independent project I've been running it like that for uh you know getting on for three years now um so with with quite a track record of um putting out frequent releases keeping up with security updates all of the kind of things you want to see around uh, a mature um you know linux project that people are actually putting in production um and and if i look at the community of users uh we have it, it's it's quite interesting because it, it splits there's probably you know close to half of the user base that is just folks that had already built on core os that just wanted something that they could take forward and just point their up you know point to a different update server and continue getting updates with a, compact, a compatible um distro and you know probably the other half of the user base um you know who's who's come to black car uh, for new designs for new builds and are, are choosing it as um you know without without having had that history but just because it's a it's a great platform to build uh, containers on um so uh, a lot of benefits to how how flat car manages systems in terms of security it's an immutable os so there's a whole um series of uh of attack vectors that by having an immutable os you avoid and that's i think very much kind of the way forward for uh for a lot of linux distros looking at going that way um has uh has a very simple atomic update system where you download a new version of the os and in a B partition, you're running in an A partition, you boot over to that when you're ready to update. Uh, if the boot doesn't take, if for some reason it doesn't, it doesn't, the system doesn't start, it'll flip back to the A partition. And we allow you to have a, a lot of policies around how that, um, how those updates work. Uh, and it it really is minimalistic and des designed for containers. So there's a, uh, as everyone here knows, it's, you know, the thousands of different Linux distros and they all have their own niche. You know, the, 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 the raison d'etre for uh, Flatcar is to run containers. It's to be a container host. Um, so it has just the bits you need to run containers. Um, it integrates with Container D. It has etcd. Um, it's a great way to run Kubernetes. Some people are just running um, you know, con containers unorchestrated or with other orchestrated. So it's not Kubernetes specific. Um, and uh, um, yeah, and 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 it has these kind of security and, man and the manageability of having that kind of um, immutable uh, construct is is pretty key when you're starting to run at scale, which is what you want to do in a lot of cloud native environments. Um, so that's kind of black of the project in terms of the process and governance and you know community and all of that. Um, so uh, some some of you may may know the origins of flat car came from a small uh, a small company called Kinfolk, which was um, uh, really just you know, a, a small team of open source experts, actually had done a lot of work uh, for CoreOS, a lot of the original contributors to the Rocket Container Engine. So one of the early uh, CNCF projects um, came out of the uh, Kinfolk team. And uh, it was actually Chris Cool, who's the, who was the CEO at Kinfolk, who, who said, hey, you know, we should, we should do this flat car uh, project. Um, so we we ran it independently for for a while until Kinfolk was acquired by Microsoft, um, and 
as you can imagine, a lot of the community had questions when you know a a small independent open source company gets acquired by um, you know one, one of the large uh, you know one of the large vendors. What does this mean for the project? Um, and that was that was nearly two years ago that that acquisition happened. And you know there was it was I would say when we went into the acquisition, the discussion was very you know was it was we were very clear that supporting the community and doing the right thing by the community was an absolutely key requirement that we had as a team. Um, but fortunately, that was Microsoft, you know, Microsoft's view as well, was they want to support the community and to support the cloud native community in general, allow the, um, you know, the project to flourish. And, uh, you know, and it, the best way to do that, in our view, is as part of CNCF, because um, that provides this independent forum for, for us to build governance and to enable contributions and to uh, really kind of um, you know, put every every participant on e on equal footing, and it also just underlines that Microsoft's intent with this project is not to dominate it, make it a Microsoft Linux or anything like that. Right? It's it's to do the right thing by the community. You know, we'll continue investing with the team we've got, but we would love to see others come in and and join and and be part of that. Some folks already have, but I think um, you know, particularly when you have the you know the Microsoft name on it. Uh, it's it's there's probably maybe um, there'd be people would be more willing to do it as part of uh, CNCF than in the current structure. So so that that's really um, ho hopefully that that gives like the high level picture. There's a bit more uh, detail in the proposal, and I'm happy to answer any um, questions that uh, come up here. Uh, thank you. Um, so thanks for the setup. Uh, I so one of the things that uh, we were trying to look at or talk about earlier um, when your proposal hit was, um, do we open this up? Uh, what are we going to find when we open this up? Um, and yeah. are there other projects in the space? And who might be interested? Um, like those kinds of things, like are we set up to handle it? Are we set up to you know help you succeed in uh, the things that you want to do? So those set of questions uh, the TOC has been talking about. Um, and I would like to invite uh, any, anyone on the TOC if they had some questions or uh, they wanted to speak to um, you know, some of the things that uh, Andrew mentioned. Um, yeah, Dims, maybe if I could just address that point before other questions come in, um, okay. because um, I think that you know, there is an important question and I address, address it a little bit in, in the proposal, but uh, I can imagine, you know, the concerns, oh God, the floodgates open, right? We, we've let in one Linux distro, now we're a Linux distro shop kind of thing, right? It's, um, I think there's something very specific about Flatcar that it absolutely is a cloud native pro project in, in the sense that, as I said, it, it exists in order to run containers and cloud native um, infrastructure on top. There are a lot of other distros out there that you can run Kubernetes on, but they exist for other reasons as well. So, so that that's kind of the the first point. Um, it's not unique in that. I mean, there are other other OSs as well out there that that would say they're um, cloud native focused, but very very few. I would I would suspect. I mean, I know of Talos, for example. Um, yeah, and they they may well be interested. I, you know, personally, I would. They did I, wouldn't, I wouldn't have. Yeah, they did yeah, a sandbox I, submission and we uh, asked for more information. Um, yeah. You know, uh, so yeah, please go, go so, for it. Uh, Talos, Bucket, Block, Bottle Rocket, you know, th there's a small number of other ones, but I think it is fairly constrained and a fairly small number. And if they meet the criteria and their teams behind them willing to maintain them and, you know, why, I, I don't think the CNCF has shied away from having, you know, two or three of the same, in the same category and it might even, um, Kind of add some validation in the sense to the to the category. So I, I you know, that, that's that's my view on it. But I, I don't think you're opening the floodgates to, you know, any and every Linux distro. It's a it's a very constrained um, uh, you know, category. I think. Yep. Thank you, um, Justin. Yeah. I mean, just to follow up on that. I mean, 
in the application, you call it container optimized operating system. I think I think the the name and the description of the category is a little bit unclear in a lot of people's minds because you ever people say Linux distribution, but in the classic sense, it's not a Linux distribution. I kind of think in my in my view because you you can't install it like inside a container to run Linux, for example, and things like that. It just doesn't. Um, and its underlying packages come from Gen two, and it. It, it, so in some sense, it's a it's a way of using Gen2. And when, when Red Hat acquired CoreOS, they took the technology and applied it to, you know, different to Fedora. So, but I'm I'm kind of interested in what you how, how you add if you've got a better term to describe the category of thing that this is because <laughs> because well, I, I think it is very unclear to people what 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 the what the yeah. category is. It's it's a good point in that so there are two very different categories of container OSs if you like so there's container host and you know and then there's container base image right so we're can we're we're optimized for the container host use case right so that means a minimal set of packages you've got a container runtime so that you can start containers um, and we're assuming that all of the runtime uh, dependencies that you have packaged in the container, you know, come packaged in the container and therefore you don't don't need them on the host. So um, yeah, maybe like container host optimized OS might be more technically correct. But if I think people understand, you know, that a base image is, is kind of a different animal. Okay, thank you. Vincent, you were gesturing about something. Uh, would you like to voice? I think you were talking about a Cappy on the chat, and then you were talking about you were gesturing when we were talking about uh, the, I guess Gentoo, probably. Sure, I'm like an animated animated Muppet giving interpretive dance while people talk. <laughs> um, the Cappy thing was just you know additionally touching on, kind of like, uh, kind of the community driven side of things, um, and um, you know. As cloud native has different needs and demands that that it, people, the things that has pulled the most development and features and otherwise support and ongoing iteration for flat car has been community driven and it's been things like capping it's been things through other CNCF projects, um, which has been interesting and somewhat of a testament because it's it, it, it in that way it is somewhat different because it's not a, a business driven development like some of the other ones in the same similar category and yes they do all smell similar but um so i understand the desire to to, to distinguish them um the hand gesturing was kind of in the 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 path of yeah flat car is not a, a container image um uh, and it is you know like core os was a derivative of chromium os which is built from Gen 2, but way back whenever. Um, we've experimented with having it do derivatives of other OSs. Um, so that's it's not it's not completely preposterous. Uh, so it is kind of a, a, a derivative product or a derivative process. Um, but also even like when Red Hat went to make what they later called Fedora Core S or whatever, Red Hat Core OS. Um, they, they they use some of the technologies, but still it was it was completely its own derivative as well. So that was the, the the they're not one for one in the same way. That was all. Uh thank you. Uh Jesse, you were uh, you know, my two cents. Uh can you voice that voice it please? Oh, I could. I, I'm not really a stakeholder here. I just am an OS an OS guy. So uh yeah, I would just I my camera won't turn on. Uh, no worries. Why? Why does it always happen? No, I just had to turn it You're off. You're doing fine. Again. Keep going. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, I just, I'll read what I said. Uh, we often refer to general purpose distributions versus purpose-built distributions. This is squarely a purpose-built distribution that's focused on orchestration data plane. And I was just asking, does it need to be categorized beyond that? There are certainly other examples of that. Um, as someone else said, there's Talos, there's Bottle Rocket. Um, Ricardo pointed that out. So that's all I was saying. Uh, yeah, I think when we open up to the host, purpose-built host, like you mentioned, I think we might we might 
kind of like the slippery slope there is like, okay, we, we need to give um, a similar consideration for the container-based images as well. Um, so I think it, it's natural for this to lead to that uh, as well, I think. Um, it, it, yeah, go for it, Matt. I was looking for you. Yeah, yeah you know, in, in all of this, uh, one of the things that sits out in my mind isn't does this, you know, join the Linux Foundation and its family? Because the CNCF is part of the Linux Foundation. It's where does it go? Does this belong in the CNCF or does it belong in the greater Linux Foundation somewhere? And so this is one of the questions that's in the back of my mind that I'm trying to answer with everything else going on, because it may be a purpose-built Linux distro, but does a purpose-built Linux distro belong in the CNCF or does it belong in the greater Linux Foundation? And it I don't actually have an answer to it, but this is the big question that I'm trying to formulate an answer to in order to know how to respond to this. Yeah, perfect. Uh, before I hand off to Richie, I do want to uh, raise one of the things that we talked before uh, in the TOC was like, hey, um, the folks doing this work are already part of our community. And you know, so it makes sense to have them close to the rest of the things that we are doing. So that was one of the thinking, uh, one of the lines of thinking that we had when we were talking about it. Uh, Richie, go for it. So first of all, I have to agree that um, Core has kicked off what we, what we now call cloud native. So there is there is certainly an argument to be made for this to be part of cloud native. Um, I think it wouldn't be a slippery slope uh, to to also accept other base images. It would be the absolute necessary logical step. Um, and that's the thing which which makes me a little bit apprehensive. Of course, we would be increasing the overall exposure surface of the amount of software which we have within CNCF substantially. Um, yeah, you're you're worried that will we scale? Will the TOC scale? Will the tags scale? Will you know that kind of thing, right? <sighs> Not only this, but also just like security processes and, and everything, because like we are talking full distributions at this point, and we will not be talking one, we will be talking half a dozen. Um, except for Kubernetes, we don't have any code base which is nearly as large as a complete distribution, I think. Um, it, it's just going to be new and larger in, in a lot of ways. At the same time, yes, from the category, it makes sense because core is everything. Like, I, yeah. I absolutely see this argument. Yeah, and Karina is, uh, Matt is talking, hey, it's not just uh, uh, just the things that we talked about, it's all the security conferences, marketing, etc. cetera. So that, that's very true, Matt. Uh, Vincent? Yeah, sure. Um, to the to the question, you know, I, LF versus CNCF or otherwise was was a huge part of the um, mulling uh, on this aspect as well. Um, and even um, as Andy mentioned earlier, like the kind of contributors and users, customers, whatever you want to say of flat car, not paying customers, but still um, are, you know, have, have, have wanted to see it in a, a neutral playing ground so that they can be more involved as well. So that's, you know, as we've worked on opening up the governance, um, that's been like to get it into an open playing area an open governance area has been a huge focus so that we could uh, um, meet them where they're at. And just like was said, it, it, it's only focus is cloud native. Um, so that makes a huge difference. And a lot of the, uh, all, all the customers in, of a flat car already present and involved in CNCF. So they're like, great. Our company already has processes for how to get involved and have maintainers and have contributions in that space. Um, that would make it easiest. And if you did end up in some other place like LF or wherever, then we could try and meet you where you're at. But like, this is mainline the purpose and what you know processes that we've already put involved. We're, we're literally trying to meet the community where it's at. Um, and to find that, that slippery slope or whatever of this space, even from conversations had during the week um, among all the different OS 
folks involved from like Cor Fedora CoreOS, Bottle Rocket, Talos, otherwise at the past KubeCon um, was really like, there was a feeling and a sentiment that in all the cloud native and, you know, the OS doesn't matter that like the OS does matter. And it's kind of a gap right now, like that people are either not talking about it or uh, it seems to be kind of a gap in the landscape of like, it's, it's implicit. Um, and could, could we not just make that part of the conversation? So I think there is, there is kind of like, we're, we're touching on like a surface tension with, with, with this topic. Um, but to truly express the sentiment from our side is that it's, it's purely community driven uh, in, in this entire effort. So that's all. Right. Uh, just, just to give you all some, uh, some, what we're looking at is first TOC has to make a decision and um, it should document it. And we need some public comment period or so, something similar to let, let the community know that we are trying to do this. Um, so that will kind of like precede the actual flat car proposal. Uh, because we are doing this for the first time and we don't know what we'll end up, you know, how we are going to make that decision. Um, uh, some of the things that we'll have to end up talking about uh, would also include, hey, um, you know, around licenses um, and uh, copyright and those kinds of things. We it, it, Yes, uh, the TOC has to bless it, uh, agree that uh, we need to open it up first, but then immediately after uh, we'll face uh, those kinds of questions that we can't answer by ourselves. We'll have to rely on CNCF staff and then we need to go back to the CNCF GB. Uh, there are some things in the charter that we might have to do something about. There is a, a legal committee in GB. So, you know, have this in the back of your mind. So it's not just the TOC, but there is other things that we need to push and uh, uh, lead and like prod and move people towards uh, to make it happen. Uh, okay. We have two more minutes. Uh, Jesse, did you want to say something quickly or? Uh, I put it in chat. I just, I was being too abstract before and I wanted to tie it back to exactly the point. Um, so yeah. I think I think oversight and governance is best attached to use case. And, and so that's, I guess, to put a fine point on it, yet it, it is an OS distribution. It could go in the LF. Uh, the main use case here is data plane for orchestration and let's not beat around the bush orchestration typically means kubernetes so yeah. i just kind of wanted to say that i think that as you consider this where are the people that are going to be use it using it and needing for it to be a healthy project yeah. where are they co-located and i think that that's sort of what vbats was saying as well uh, also if there are more of the same category then there will be more hopefully more uh, cross pollination between the teams so that is something that I look forward to as well. Um, Andrew, do you have any last minute to say? Um, I, I just want to really just underscore Vincent's point that the you know the community around Flatcar just overlaps one on one with the community or, or or it's a subset of you know the broader cloud native community. I mean, the people we talk to, it's always we'll see you at KubeCon. You know that I mean that that is the pond that we play in. Those are the people we talk to, um, you know, and, and and that was really the driving um, consideration when, when it came down to thinking about, well, should we pursue LF or should we pursue GMCF? Okay. Um, thank you. Uh, please have patience with us as we work through this. Uh, and, you know, we'll definitely involve you in the discussions uh, as they go forward. Okay. Thank Thanks you, Thanks a lot, everyone. And everyone. Uh, bye. See you next time. Thank you so much, everyone. See you online. Thanks.